Heidi Hell friends, welcome to a Black girl or person's guide to horror panel. We're still figuring out the title, but we outside, baby, and inside at the same fucking time. It's your girl, Cat Daddy, and I am here with so many amazing, bright, awesome, talented people, and I'm not gassing it up because I say this shit on the regular, Um, and I want y'all to get into them. Not even just before we do that, all month long is clearly Black History Month. Look at your calendar, look at your eyes, look at everything. Um, real, real live Fox Five is Black Three Sixty Six, um, and we would love y'all to tune into all the things we got going on today and what we got going on on the Dread Central um network on their all their socials on our individual pages, baby. Just tap something and it's gonna pop up. Before I get into all the things, um, I just want to introduce everybody and let them talk about their lovely selves, um, because they have way more great things to say outside of just me. Um, so. I would like to introduce Ash to Ashes. Um, that's Ash. Hey. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> yes, we also have Gigi Murakami. Gigi, what's good, Papa? Yeah. Hello, everybody. Hello. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> um, we also have Jazz, the 40 ounce counter Hello, everybody. Howdy. <laughs> we have Sheree, the poppin' poppin' slayer. Hi, everybody. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> and we also have zero gravity. And in my mind, like a, a skateboard just rolled off. <laughs> <laughs> skateboard P, zero G. Welcome. Happy Black History Month. Hey, y'all. Okay, so, bars. We love to see it. <laughs> y'all wear many hats. Y'all do many things. Um, Thank y'all for sharing space. What's what's good with y'all? Like, before we get into all the things, what are y'all into right now? Like, what's going on in your sphere? What can we see from you? I'm getting to the beginning, top, bottom of all the things. Who go first? Because it's February. <laughs> our podcast, Jump Mind You a Gravity Bloody Massacre, is back for our third season. We are doing fun things. You might see familiar faces, even in this call, because we're everywhere. Ooh, <laughs> ooh, everywhere. <laughs> uh, yeah, Bloody Massacre is back, and I'm so excited. It's been forever. We're going to spill the tea. It's going to be hot. Sheree is going to keep up those receipts like she normally does because, you know, every day is an adventure. You never know when you need some blackmail. Um, and I mean, besides that, I'm excited to get on Twitch. That's happening soon. Now that I got my new office and watching movies every day, all day, all the time. Okay. Uh, I'll go next. Sorry. <laughs> So on Rise from the Dead with my partner in crime, Germ, we're um, starting to push out episodes of our new season. We're getting ready to push out or record our special Valentine's episode. I cannot spill any tea on that, but just mm. stay tuned. It's going to be fun. It's going. I'll let y'all know it's going to be another game episode. So just like our last, last episode, it's going to be another game, but I'm not going to mention the couple's names. That's a secret on kill the dead we're getting ready to uh record our black history month slash women in horror month episode and i might have a nice surprise guest on that um episode and i'm so super excited for it so yeah what about you Gigi? okay sorry i'm i'm i forget that i also blog and create content so i'm like ooh. Let me set my stuff up. And then <laughs> everything was going wrong. So, <laughs> um, but yeah, uh, I am planning on, fingers crossed, hopefully getting a horror anthology of uh, uh, horror manga done this year. I'm Amazing. shooting for, thank you, thank you. I'm shooting for um, a Kickstarter to be done by September um, of, I want to say like five original stories. If I can do more, I will try, but I it might have to be capped at about five based on my current timeline. So that is what I am excited about right now. Um, there may be one or two other things that's happening. I don't know the results of those things yet, but some other very exciting things that's uh, potentially in the pipeline. So if if it works out, then yeah, that's what I'm talking about. By the time you see this, if you fi figure it out, that's what it is. That's what I'm talking about. So thank you, Kai. <laughs> hoping for those to pan out and they will thank you all right i mean y'all know y'all already know what it is uh it's girl that's scary I, 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 me and cat got the same thing going on uh <laughs> we just doing stuff as we do every thursday and of course 
all month long and black history 366 don't 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 try to be funny and be like oh we just doing it this month you you've seen our timeline don't play in our face thanks <laughs> And we love to see it. I'm so glad to share space with y'all. I didn't really do things traditionally this go round, um, but I will leave plenty of time in the end for us to drop all the things. And you can also find all their information in the helpful links down below and everywhere because we tagged it everywhere. I'm so glad y'all have made it this far on the speech. Yes. <laughs> um, but before I turn into my normal self, I want to break the ice. We all had some time to kind of digest what all is going on. Um, I, I barely did, but let's get it. So, my icebreaker for us today, before we get things on the road, is if you can be everywhere, everything, anywhere, all at once, what would you do and where would you go? I'm going to go in alphabetical order, um, starting with Ash. Ooh, that's a good question. You know, y'all, I mean, I'm a busy person. I work two jobs. I'm going back to school. I'm tired. So with that being said, I'm going to treat myself to a vacation. I'm, I want to go to Barcelona. So <laughs> I want to do all that over in Barcelona. I want to recreate Cheetah Girls 2. I want to <laughs> watch. <laughs> yeah, that's what, that's my, that's what I'm going to do. That's <laughs> good answer. <laughs> yes. I hate to be that person, but I've never seen Cheetah Girls. I'm sorry. Don't hate mm -hmm. me. I never okay. seen it. <laughs> It's also girl without cable. I'm, that's fair. I, that's fair. <laughs> I was going to say never too late, but also like sometimes our childhoods be scaring me in present day. You know, stuff doesn't hold up well. We're in that age now. Yeah, sometimes I'm like, okay, let's keep it the way I remember it. I've had that happen to me too many times recently. Mm, nostalgia is, is a hell of a drug. Mm -hmm. It is. It's true. That is true. Um... Let's see. In alphabetical order, is my turn now, right? Yes. Okay. Okay. <laughs> um, I think if I could go anywhere, I am ready to go back to Japan. Um, I am ready to go back and see my in-laws because I miss them a lot and I love them a lot. Um, and I'm ready to get into some authentic cheap Japanese food that is there delicious and that's it hella affordable <laughs> <laughs> um what else I, I think that might be it I really just want to go back to Japan I want to see my in-laws and like just talk to them and chill with them I love that that's it's wholesome that's all I got <laughs> Not no we need that. that that's dope <laughs> mm -hmm. I miss them and the lot. food, I want. Ooh, the right. food, the food though, yes. so good. I'm living through you, Jazz. What about you? All right. Um, I too am busy, and I need to be somewhere far, far away from a school. I would like to be, um, also on a vacation, but I need there to not only be like a beach. I need there to be one of them spas. And I'm just going to be in there getting every service, just getting all the services. And then I'm going to go, since I'm everywhere all at once, I can snap my fingers and I just want to be around and I want to be at all the Marshalls in the different places around the world. And I want to smell the candles from the Marshalls and <laughs> TJ Maxx's all over the country. I am tired of this election down the street. And I know they got them DW candles at them other spots. I know they do. I'm trying to get them candles from everywhere. I would love to go to the TJ Maxx everywhere because they go have I something love special. TJ Maxx. Yes. And it's wow. like, they don't have the same stuff. So I'm like, yep. Oop. <laughs> oh my God. Jess, are funny. you stressed? <laughs> are you stressed? It's aromatherapy. It's massage yeah, therapy. All the therapies. I feel that though. <laughs> Hooray the Slayer. You up next, friend. Hello. Um, I would go back to London. That's where I love to be. But I would go five years in the future because five years in the future, in theory, I'll have more money because I can't keep doing what I'm doing now. Um, and I'll have an assistant to handle my day to day bullshit. So Ooh. I can just be like, I'm doing my podcast today and writing. Leave me alone. Um, <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the life I'm choosing to live five years from now in London. Yeah. I love that one, too. With a drink in your hand. Always. Yes. Always. 
I'll roll in and you'll be like, what time is it? You're six hours ahead. <laughs> like, what are you doing? <laughs> and I'll be like, drinking. Also. <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Why aren't you drinking? Because <laughs> it's three in the morning. You should still be drinking. <laughs> you got to stay and hydrated. It's like... <laughs> Vitamin C is in my most of screwdrivers. <laughs> Vitamin C is healthy. There you go. Not a line. Um... I okay so one of my goals for this year is I want to attend more film festivals if I could do just like anything and you know like I have to be mindful with what I decide to do this year because again I can't keep doing this forever because I need to make money um so if I could be everywhere and do whatever I would probably just hit all the film festivals, even if they overlap, because I can be multiple people and be all the places at all the times. Um, yeah, I think that's that's what I would do. Then I could ultra, I could cross that one off my list like 17 times and that would be great. I love that. Y'all are y'all are inspiring me right now. Um, I'm so serious because it was like a vast like variety of answers. I I, I if I had to answer, I would be a sea creature. So I could just explore the ocean. <laughs> that go. was actually it. I'm so Ooh, serious. See, you brave. Go. Yeah, because it's scary down there. So I think you know, I, I was about I'd to say like a giant squid, because you know, we're 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 rare out here in the streets. Um, <laughs> and maybe I can get down to the lowest levels and I can report back and we all could communicate. Like, you know, just like I'm I'm a I'm I'm a squid and I said that would be life. legendary. <laughs> That's what I would do. Can you imagine me as a squid? Like part time on the weekend, you piss me off. Part squirt, squirt. Time on the weekend. <laughs> I feel like you would be a squid with your glasses still on. I feel like I you would, would. <laughs> because it's dark down there, and I would be friends with anglerfish, so I could see what the hell is going on. Because oh, no. our time squid could... is wild. <laughs> Amazing! I love this. We love this timeline. Okay, before we get into the nitty gritty of the genre how we all play our parts in the genre what we love about the genre let's let's dive a little bit into it why horror what about it pulls you in why is this your bag why is this your escape when the world gets shaky if that's your thing um feel free to just let it jump out you know oh, still... oh, is it Africa, it's it's jump, yeah jump it out just popcorn style jump it out baby yeah, popcorn. Just popcorn, popcorn style so uh <laughs> listen i just feel like life is hard especially as a black woman you know or in black people you just out here and you you know you you start trying to stretch the money life is not so bad when you realize you don't have a poltergeist in your house like you had a bad day and you pop that tv on and you realize that Charles Lee Ray is not rolled underneath your couch and he's not going to come up there and call you a stupid bitch. It's just, you know, there are certain like moments of peace that I have. <laughs> There's no demon ruining my credit right now. Like there, I, it's just me. It's just me ruining my credit, not the demon. Uh, but I, you know, again, like it just makes you feel like, all right, well, it could be worse. And also I can escape here because when I turn this off, I know Frankenstein, Okay, I don't know, but I hope Frankenstein and him not about to run up on my spot after this. Like, I can just go to sleep and be like, yep, th my life is not so bad. It's normal. <laughs> oh, I'm out. I'll, I'll go next. <laughs> <laughs> um, To me, I just love everything about horror. I love movies. I just love the community. Like, without horror, I would have not, not met any of y'all are like any like the people like my friends that I now consider family so um a couple years ago I was like in a dark place like it was not good for me I had lost my baby brother like I was just in a dark place so like horror like just really helped me cope it helped me like just to tackle on some issues that I was going through and just um even though I know like majority of the movies I watch is not going to really happen. Like it just helped me find like some, like find ex an escape. Mm -hmm. um, horror also helps me prepare like, okay, well, if I do get stuck in the woods, like I'm going to make sure I carry this with me. I'll make sure I'm not going <laughs> to do that. Like I'm going to be smart about it. I'm not going to be stupid. Like some of the characters be acting in these movies, but it's just horror just means so much to me. And I'm just for forever thankful for it. And I just, 
I'm actually surprised for myself that I know a lot of stuff about it. So, <laughs> cause like growing up, like as a little kid, I was terrified. Like Chucky was like the first horror movie I watched. I was like, oh my gosh, my dolls are going to come to life and kill me. And then trying to take over my body. Like, but now, now I'm just look over- at you. Right. Look at me now. <laughs> like, like I tell like people, like I work, I'm like, yeah, I watch horror movies every night and I go to bed. Like I just, horror is just a part of me and I'm just forever thankful for it. I agree. I'm like you. Go ahead, Gigi. My bad. See, you was like pop. I was like popcorn and I was like, okay, I'm gonna jump in. And then it's like, "Mm, nah, you got popcorn collided. That's all right. (laughs) You got a double (laughs) dust. I was going to say, um, that's part of why I also like horror because of, um, it's cathartic nature. Um, I feel like horror has such a like incredible ability to like transform like one's perspective on different things. Um, I really like, um, I really love body horror stuff, but I also, I also kind of like stories, uh, where you can kind of relate with the monster in a lot of different situations. Um, I liked that a lot more as a kid, I think, though, uh, because I was definitely feeling like the monster as a kid. Uh, So I do, I like that aspect of horror. Um, I think the number one thing for me and why I like to use it in my art and why it's stuck with me so much, though, is, like, because it's so, like, it allows you to feel multiple things at once. If you want to just have fun and, like, escape, you can do that. If you want to be introspective um and relate to you know a given situation or a character you can do that if you want to mentally prepare <laughs> for a messed up situation or like a, a potential unknown you can do that so i like how much fun you can have with horror um at like different levels of seriousness rad i was going to say ash I was also a huge scaredy cat. That's why I got into horror because I wanted to build up a tolerance. It it doesn't make sense, but I was in middle school. So like middle school logic, you know what I mean? Um, But I like, I like horror because again, what Jazz said, um, real life doesn't seem that bad when I don't have to worry about zombies outside and where I'm going to get my next meal. If I'm going to eat today, um, I just have to deal with the regular old horrors that are life, put them into a crazy perspective. It actually doesn't seem that bad. Um, but I also like what we can say with horror about what we are scared of, especially when you break it down into different, um, time periods, you know, what we were scared of in the eighties is nothing like what we're scared of today, um, in the grand uh, history of you know society and how societies change, I think that's really cool to look at. Um, but I, if I were to just bare bones it, I think I've always been a little bit of an adrenaline junkie, and I like the feeling of being scared. Um, I too go to work, and my coworkers ask me, "What do you do every day after work?" And I say, "I watch horror movies, and then I go to sleep." And they say, "What? That's crazy." But I like the feeling of being scared, and yes, I'm always scared when I watch horror movies, but that's why I keep coming back. I feel that. I, like everything else, got into horror through spite. I was like four. (laughs) I was like four. And my older brothers, and the youngest, oldest one is like 11 years older than me, were watching horror. My mother said I couldn't. And I was like, is it because I'm a girl, Leona? And we went back and forth. And eventually she's like, you can watch it. If you have nightmares, like I'm crying to me. And I never had a nightmare. But I did have like wild imaginary friends like Freddy Krueger and Michael Myers. And <laughs> as I got older, I was like, oh, people still don't want me to enjoy horror. Well, I'm going to enjoy it the loudest. Um, I'm not supposed to be over there. I'm going to be there. I'm going to own your festival because I couldn't go that one year. And that's just how I moved through spite. And so <laughs> I love that horror. I love that. Me. <laughs> Do that. That's just inspirational. I, yeah, I do love that as well. <laughs> and I feel that I'm about like it. parents not allowing you to uh, watch horror. Um, the majority of my family is Jehovah's Witness. So whenever I would go to my aunt's house, um, it, it would be a no. I remember one time I bought the um, oh. Sleepy Hollow DVD and I didn't have like I grew up 
super poor, no cable, didn't have a DVD player. And I bought this DVD and I was like, I'm gonna go to my aunt's house and watch it. Um, it, it, it The movie was going for a second. The moment that that one, the witch like chopped the bat's head off. She was like, oh, no, 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 no. We're not doing that. We're not doing that. Turned it off. I don't know what happened to the DVD. And that was the end oh, of that. No. So no. I, I empathize with that. <laughs> she got to reverse for your DVD at least. Like at least, pay pay. right? Yeah. Like I would rather a Venmo right now. Why are you thinking about it? That'll be twelve ninety nine. <laughs> Inflation. Don't, yeah, Inflation. I'm about to say twenty. That'll be two fifty. It's like just... <laughs> first of all, it was Sleepy Hollow. It's it's not that deep, you know. <laughs> it's not that deep. It was something else, maybe, but you know, it's okay. It is what it is. <laughs> okay. Well. You all are a, like I said, a group of very talented, a, a room full of people who wear many hats and do various things. Um, And so I would like to know, how, what do you guys feel were the highs and lows for horror in 2023? Whether it be in the community, whether it's like what we're interacting with, like, you know, visually, like what movies we checked out, what shows. What do you feel were like some of the really high points of the last year? What maybe kind of like landed, like we was here maybe i don't know bitch and then what do you feel like we need to try again going forward guys talk to me like literally sophie wild showed up out of nowhere and i was like new favorite person she only plays characters named mia as far as i can tell which i mean get a career however you get it uh, <laughs> uh she's one of my favorites i think that and like when evil lurks between those two somewhere is my personality and yeah like some of the lows, we just saw a lot of like stereotypes and tropes get reused again. Um, we keep seeing that. I feel like that's a much larger conversation. Um, and some of the movies I wish had done better because they like started off being like, we're gonna have black leads in here, exorcist non-believer. Um, and then we sidelined them in their own story. And I was like, Blumhouse, we got enough problems. But that's oh. that's what I have to say about that. <laughs> okay, okay. Um, there were uh, many highs I've seen like a lot of movies in 2023 definitely talk to me Godzilla minus one hey yes. yo yes. I <laughs> yes we already know that this is a Godzilla stan account um but I just I was expected it to be good good because it's Godzilla I was gonna have a good time but I wasn't expected to like you know get a little water under my eye you know I don't be crying mm -hmm. like that if it was I was like oh no no that movie slapped real hard um they cloned Tyrone. I know I was late to the party, but yeah. that movie was excellent. I loved that movie. I liked Totally Killer, although it was silly, but it was good, silly in a very good way, a very rewatchable kind of way. And I'm like, no, I could watch that movie a lot. And even Saw 10 was really good. And I'm not the biggest Saw fan, but Saw 10 is at <laughs> least on the top five Saw movies for me. And there's 10 of them, so it's definitely in the top half. I'm just let y'all know. Now, that Pet Cemetery movie um mm. uh, that that was i'm a pet cemetery fan i read the book i own the dvd i watched that movie at least once or twice a year and it, i there's so much they could have done with bloodlines because there is lore there and what they did was really a punch in the face like you punched me in my nose like you really you it is uh, I, it, and then what made me even more bad is everybody was like, I hate exorcists, but, you know, normally believe or whatever is going on, exorcists. I hate that movie. This is the worst movie ever when Pet Cemetery is right here. Yeah. I know <laughs> y'all line. It's got to be the racism beating y'all ass because y'all seen them black people on that cover and you wasn't messing with it. And of course, they kind of misused the OG character. So I understand some some rage, but it was not worse than Bloodlines. Bloodlines was really, really low. And so was that Winnie the Pooh movie. And I was expecting a silly good time from that. I was No, I did not. I wish I had more hands to give it more thumbs down. Ooh. I didn't even I'll be watch watching it. the second one. I'll be watching the second one. It's one of the few movies last year I was like, I'm not even going to. I know better. I watched oh, the no, Sloth I movie and I wouldn't do Winnie. The Sloth movie wasn't that bad. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I had a little bit of fun with that sloth movie, but it was meant to be like stupid. But also I was like, oh, it's a little fun. <laughs> she wasn't the worst movie of last year. And I can say that unironically because I watched 65 the week after her. And I was like, at least the sloth had a plot and a purpose. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, Let's see. I think 
<laughs> highs of 2023 um for me probably would start with indie horror getting more recognition and also getting more money behind yes. it um uh, we had a, a lot of great independent releases last year that kind of took the mainstream by surprise which I think is really awesome especially when they're going up against like Saw 10 and you know what I mean like it's it's tough out here so that's really cool when evil lurks absolutely destroyed me um I was very excited to see that and also birth slash rebirth are both really um extreme and unforgiving horror movies which I would love to see more of absolutely um Lowe's I think we I saw a little bit too many tropes um that I would have liked to avoid it's a it's extra annoying now um because we should be doing better now you know I can watch something from 2002 and understand that you know it's a product of its time it's different now nobody's making those mistakes anymore um yeah that was for sure um, and also extra low. Um, I would like to talk about that pet cemetery joint. I was sitting right there with Gigi, and if Pam terrible. Greer can show up, mm -hmm. if Pam Greer can show up and can't save it, I don't know what to tell you. I, she did her best, but you know, I was a little uh, mis uh, misuse. I I do believe massive misuse. That was it was bad. It was bad. <laughs> Now I feel bad for the rating I gave it. Like, just thinking back on it, I'm like, yeah, they did kind of. Mm. Mm. <laughs> I wanted I... to call her agent and throw the wig at the agent to be like, you let this happen. Oh, the wig. Oh, the wig. You let this happen to Pam. I <laughs> forgot about that wig. Um, I, I can't. <laughs> it's what I think of first. I think of the wig and then I think of the movie. <laughs> it might have been the scariest thing in the movie, to be honest. <laughs> Damn. Damn. For real. <laughs> I was like, are we coming on with it? And why is it on her head? And I'm like, oh no, that's not one of the pits. We have, we've gone too fucking far. <laughs> like, wow. <laughs> that's oh, not one that's of the pits low. is wild. That's another low. We still have bad wigs. We that, still have yeah. bad wigs. Did Tyler Let's... Perry make the movies? It's like, let me stop. No. Like, there's no <laughs> excuse. But facts. Let me mm. stop. But yeah, just to piggyback off of you, Zero, um, I felt like a proud cousin when it was like with the whole indie films. Like I felt like 2023, like with indie, it proved like it proves everyone like, hey, like even though we're independent, like we can still do the damn thing. Mm -hmm. Like don't just put us down because oh we're indie and we don't have this or that. Like there were so many great movies that came out that were independent. So I just I felt so proud because I'm always that type of person that's like, you should check out this indie film. And I always, I want to uh, like spotlight like indie films because they deserve love too. So I definitely agree with you on that. Um, so I'm trying to think. Um, some of the lows, I mean, I'll try to think some. Um, the whole Melissa Brera situation yeah. and Scream 7, that was just, that was just dirty. And I'm still ticked off about it. Um, and then just like how some parts of the horror community can be very toxic. And some of y'all brought up the whole the exorcist believer. And I was reading some of the comments because of like what happens in that movie. I'm not gonna spoil it in case people who are watching it haven't seen it, but just some people, so-called horror fans thoughts and feelings towards a character in that movie and the outcome of it was just purely disgusting and I'm just super disappointed that some parts of the community feel feel like they can stoop that low when something does go their way and I'm just like we're better than that so um highs I'm gonna have to say when evil lurks if you know me I'm all about that international horror. I'm mm -hmm. all about that effed up horror. I just, I love a horror movie that proves that nobody is safe. Mm -hmm. And when Evil Lurks checked all those boxes, I was in that theater. I snuck in my pint of ice cream. I'm in the back row. I'm just like, <laughs> oh no, I, I can't finish that. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> like, oh, she's much. No, I can't finish that. But wait, Ash, you saw it in the theater? Yeah. Sorry. I am so I'm jealous. jealous. I was so happy. I was able to catch. I was surprised that the AMC in my area was showing it because they be acting funny a little bit with some releases, but I will give them props that when it comes to international horror, they always have. And I'm like, I'm in there. And it was just me and two other people in that whole showing. That's and the best. I, yes. And I'm all like, oh God, like that movie, it takes a lot to gross me out. That movie did it. Like literally when Evil Lurks checks all the boxes for me, like when it comes to what I look for in a horror movie. So that was definitely a highlight, a high point for of 2023 for me. I even I even messaged Damien, like the director. I was like, hey, I don't know if you're gonna see this, but I just want to let you know I just got done watching with Evil Lurks and you did the damn damn thing. Thank you very much because that movie messed me up. <laughs> I love that. The best thing mm-hmm. about indie horror is like, you know, there's a good chance that the director can respond and, and he be responded like, back. Yeah. Oh wow, that's cool. <laughs> okay. Um, can I okay. can I give a a a low? I got a I got yeah. A we we didn't really talk about it, like any like I guess horror TV, but um, and I I don't know if this I mean it, it kind of counts as horror I think I don't know if y'all seen if it kind of counts it counts. Okay, so uh, I don't know if y'all saw the other, what is it the other black girl? Oh, I Hulu? wanted to watch it, but I did. Oh, so. Mm. I was watching that. Um, I it was it started off really well, and uh, you know it 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 the whole like crux of the show was talk was just basically talking about like like corporate office politics, right? And how there when there are multiple black people, specifically black women in the office, there's almost like this like duel to the death of like who's going to be the last black girl standing um and i didn't know how they were going to do it with like um a horror lens to it and um it started off really well it started off really well and then it kind of it's it kind of fizzled out a little bit for me um i don't want to i don't want to spoil it but at the end you kind of like it kind of brings up like black social politics in a way that isn't really like saying anything. <laughs> I think um, I I want y'all to see it and like check it out because like it it's it gets a while to like get to that point, but by the time you get there, it's just like what's going on here? What's going on? There, there's less horror happening and like less psychological tension happening and like there's more there's more commentary without actually anything to say so that was kind of a disappointment to me um because it it seemed like it was going to be like something really relatable something deep and like I knew there'd be commentary there I just thought that it would have a little bit more I thought it would have more to say um it, it kind of like it kind of puts you in this position of in order to get ahead you have to be like a demon basically <laughs> and it's like if you don't want to get ahead then you're just gonna be black and broke and like not a demon not like mm-hmm. a le- legit demon but it's just mm-hmm. check it out and yeah. and give me your thoughts I was disappointed though um a high though I'm not sure if Talk to Me is 2023 or 2022. Mm-hmm. 2023, right? Yeah. Because okay. then come out to there's 2023, so yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. So that was a high for me. But I mean, I guess that's also in the realm of indie horror. So that's, yeah. like, I agree. I agree with that. Um, I was super excited to see that. I did not... I did not expect to like the movie as much as I did. I thought that, like... 
the horror was really good. The pacing was really good. The acting was immaculate. Everybody in that movie deserved every last bit of seedling, flower, leaf, all, all of that that was thrown away. They deserved <laughs> all of it. Um, fantastic. I I haven't bought a horror movie on DVD in a minute. And that that kicked up the trend. That kicked up the trend. So now I'm I'm I've gone hunting after that. But yeah. Okay, okay. Well, on to the next one. 2023 was long as a bitch. I don't know what was longer, this January or 2023. But even still, there were a lot of moments from last year. You know, Megan or Mathrigan, like Sheree likes to say, came on out <laughs> in the streets. We had skin and brink. I caught COVID and I thought I was in the movie at one point over the summer, just looking at the ceiling and lights. But with that being said, what do you feel was the breakout moment or some breakout moments in horror this last year? We got all kinds of shit. We got all kinds of flavors tossed into the ring. Some were hit and some were missed. What landed for y'all? I think uh, Mithrigan definitely kicked her off. I think because it came out in January. And you know, January movies... We don't usually get the bangers in January. They save those for like July. You know, sometimes you get to some bangers in December, but no, 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 nah, not this time. And I didn't know if it was going to be good. I didn't know if I was going to like that movie or not. And I like it. It's not like my favorite, but it was it was good. I I'm I understand why I would get a sequel. Um, def I feel like that. Like, you know how you about to throw the dice? Like, somebody be like, hey, blow on the dice so I can uh get good luck. I feel like Megan blew on the dice for horror and they rolled it. Um, And then we had a whole bunch of good movies because she kicked the year off, like, popping. Uh, this year, I don't know, because that January movie was wild. But uh, I feel like Megan was one. I think that Talk To Me was another. It was the indie gut punch. And I also think that... um. Not they clone Tyrone. Well, that was a moment in July, I will say, because everybody was talking about it. But I think Saul 10 was a moment because, and Scream, but they came out like, hey, these sequels, I know that y'all are tired of sequels, but at the minimum, these sequels are done fairly well and they're deep into their franchise. So it can be done. Here is a model. So I think that's also nice. I like that. Yeah, I... um. I'm probably going to get a lot of flack for this, but I was not the biggest Megan or Megan three, whatever you want to call it, fan. I, <laughs> I, I don't know if I just expected so much of it. I don't know. I just, it was good, but I'm just not like, oh my gosh, but I'm I'm going to go back and revisit it. I'm, I'm going to probably check out the unrated version. I'm with you, um, Ash. I'm with you. you. I feel seen. I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> But I will have to go with, I'm not going to bring up what evil works again. Um, the blackening. The blackening was such a good, I don't know if you, can we curse? Can I say the it word? I'm just I didn't curse about 50 times. Okay, I, I opened this thing up, a, curse word. It was just a good fucking time. My whole theater experience with that movie was, was amazing. Like nobody got offended by like the jokes or anything that was happening in the movie we're having a good time we're laughing we're crying like this guy in my theater had like that belly laugh that just had everybody going and I was just living but that proved to me because I feel like we haven't had any good like spoof type movies since like the OG scary movie and scary movie 2 like I miss mm -hmm. that movie now even though it's some things in those films are problematic they were a the movies were a good time like to this day we're still quoting those movies and i'm like man i missed that feeling like oh a good spoof movie and here comes the blackening skit and i was like that's one of my favorite skits of all time and then, like learning that there was gonna be a full movie i'm like i'm here for it i can't wait but just in that theater watching that movie i'm like i can relate to every single thing in that movie and i just loved it it was such a high a highlight for me um that year um so yeah i i have to say that 
I'm going to swerve into TV because 2023 was the year people started watching from. Not enough people are still watching it, but it finally got people talking because I ran across it like in late 2022, the first season. And I was like, this is good. Nobody said anything about it. Why didn't nobody tell me this is happening? Here, I was like, we're for an Emmy. And people are like, I don't know what you're talking about. And then like season two rolled around and people could see the first one for free on Prime. And they're like, oh, it is good. I'm like, what do you think I've been yelling at you? Uh, <laughs> so to see all the podcasts and like all of the like YouTubers be like, hi, From is a real show. I'm like, yes, yes. Give your Perno and his team all the attention because it's it's one of the best shows on TV. Like, I'm not going to lie. The, that and Chucky are always fighting for top spot in my list at the end of the year. Yo, Yellow Jackets? Come on. Yellow Jackets are always a breakout. Or was that 2022? Was that, tw- that was season two last year, but season two, they got to the cannibalism. Okay. So it's a whole new world. It's a new win. Okay. Yeah, it's a, it's, it is certainly a whole new world. <laughs> They're like, oh, That's watch true. this. <laughs> yeah <laughs> watch just watch um that's true from definitely had its redemption redemption arc last year um i think something that i thought was really crazy that was like a moment is uh that weird in between um when saw 10 came out and also then we had exorcist believer i don't know which one came first i don't remember but there was like the perfect center in between the two where The Exorcist, which is a remake of a super, super, super critically acclaimed film, is bombing. And Saw, which is horror garbage for, you know, fandom people that doesn't really have any substance, was going crazy. That happening at the same time, even though, you know, we all love The Exorcist, we do, but let's be real, Saw is not critically acclaimed by that, like that. Um it was kind of like I told you so moment, I guess. Like, it's all good. All of it. All of it is good. And now I have the numbers to show you that it's all good. Want to circle back for Dominique Fishback, who was the reason for the yes. season four. Yes. We got a Black yes. Girl Slasher. She was funny. She was vicious. She's everything I've always wanted. Um, I, I hope she's to kill again. I don't know how we're going to do it, but I'm, I'm going to tune in if they do. She took my answer, by the way. I just want y'all to know that. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh. Oh, just that was my answer. <laughs> no, <I'm not. laughs> it was a good answer. I agree. <laughs> In my mind, it's about to be a what? Girl a girl fight. That's not my answer. And now the beat can't stop. Ooh, okay. Before I cut up too much. Um... What's a movie in the last year you feel like did not get enough shine? Like something like, I know we've heard When Evil Lurks. I know that we heard about From, even though From is not a movie and I'm one of the people straight and you've been yelling that in the streets. So I'm here, I'm here. Um, but what's a movie that you feel like did not get the flowers you felt like it deserved from the past year? Birth, Rebirth. Birth slash Rebirth. Ooh, that movie was crazy. Yeah. It shook me. It was like real dark, real great performances. The type of horror that actually like hurts on the inside, like that real life horror that is a teetering on reality, mm-hmm. um, that has distant cousins of situations in our reality that actually do happen. That movie was crazy. It was great. Not enough people were talking about it for me. I still I need to watch that. it. I'm kind of scared too. But <laughs> you should be. I feel it's like it's awesome. going to I feel like it's going to hit me in the feels. But, I, uh, I feel like people shouldn't attempt a Frankenstein movie for a while after Birth, Rebirth. Ooh. Well, since you, brought was... up, <laughs> since you brought up a Frankenstein type of movie, I have two. I look, I, there was a little talk going around about this movie and I finally watched it and I was just like, oh, I need someone else to talk about it. Um, the Angry Black Girl, Her Monster. Um, that movie really, really got me in my feels because of just the subject matter of it and just the um just like the execution of everything like I I will admit I feel I did feel like the ending kind of fell flat for me but overall I just I I really love that movie I really resonated with it um and then the next film is Dark Harvest I'm so mad that I didn't watch that movie till like after the new year so i didn't put it on my list but 
the premise of it was so original and like the twist um like ending to it was like oh I really like you but um yeah that one I felt I feel like people should talk about more one of mine is the passenger the passenger I did not expect all of that because like we all have come to expect Kyle Gowner to just do what he does and we're like that's good <laughs> he's like no y'all sleeping on me and I'm like excuse you what is this I didn't <laughs> I'm just attacking the doll to watch this with um it's a very tense little movie and of course like the film bros are like it's not horror so you know it's horror um I am also going to advocate for riding in the sun which is what glass onion wanted to be it oh. is how you do a murder mystery and you have fun with it um it's for the adults do not bring your children to see this movie uh you can catch her on like movie but she's worth, she's worth it. She's fun. She's doing the things that I've always wanted to see done. Cause I'm tired of these mysteries just being like, here's what it is. Stick around for three hours. I don't want to. Um, she was like a little razzle dazzle, a little spice, a little lorries. Um, and I, I like her. I love her. <laughs> a little lorries. <laughs> um, I think cobweb was pretty good. It didn't like reinvent the wheel. And could you predict some of this stuff? Sure. But the way it felt, especially for like a Halloween kind of movie, there are a couple movies that gave, like Dark Harvest felt like a very much Halloween mm -hmm. movie. Like that's something that I will watch again on Halloween. I watched it a little bit later, but um, I think more people should, I didn't hear that many people talking about Cobweb. Like, I don't know if I missed the train or what that was about. Um, I'm going to keep telling y'all to watch They Clone Tyrone. I gave that five out of five on letterbox that's my one of my top fives and it's not five for 2023 i'm not playing that movie i i really love that movie and the music's amazing oh i don't know if it's just me but i feel like thanksgiving didn't really get any like like any real traction i thought it was pretty good i thought it was funny um i thought it was i thought it was scary enough I thought it I thought that the formula that it had would be enough to get people talking more, but it, that wasn't the case. So I was a little surprised by that personally. But yeah. Good old Thanksgiving. <laughs> I have thoughts. I'm a captain for later. <laughs> I want to hear them. I've also been <laughs> capped. <laughs> I ultimately I like the movie, but that's where I'm gonna stop today. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna say the rest later. But ultimately, we we're all. I see I your see brain. You. I see your brain. <laughs> I yeah, see it. we're here. <laughs> I just um, I feel like it's just the type of movie that would have gotten more. Absolutely. Like, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like the formula. It's, it's got that formula where you would think it'd have a little. I listen. I I didn't say if the movie was like who was involved was not, you know, I'm not talking about that. <laughs> I'm talking about just the formula of the movie and like, you know, what typically tends to do well. I, I can't see why, like, it didn't sort of have a Megan situation. Well, mm -hmm. let me not say it like that because Megan was totally different. But, well, not totally different, but it was it was trying some new stuff. Um but I, I just feel like it's kind of in that same wheelhouse. So I don't see why it couldn't have gotten the same or like similar attention. Okay. I haven't seen it yet. So no, I'm going to just shut up. <laughs> That's what I said. I'm going to see y'all later. I'm going to see y'all later. Okay. <laughs> um, girls start touching their nose. So I want to touch my nose too. <laughs> it's definitely mean girls and not like mean girls because no one's mean here. Um, Just to shift gears a bit. Just to shift some gears, um, and we're kind of in the room anyways, we talked a bit about what we don't like that's been making a comeback that we thought we were done. We're looking at you, tropey, trope, tropes. Um, but let's talk a little bit more about what we want to see. What do you feel is missing in horror right now? And what would you like to see fill that gap? Like, And hopefully somewhere, somehow, somebody is listening and they pay you because they heard your ideas. I... My biggest thing is originality. One of the reasons why I love international horror is that it's original and they're not afraid to go there. Now, when it comes to over here, 
we like to remake everything and just not spread out not like try something new and I'm like okay like I get it because sometimes people I mean not everybody can handle it but I feel like we can I feel like we should take a break from reboots reimagining some of that stuff and just be more original I there are so many amazing screenwriters out there and indie filmmakers out there that deserve to get their flowers and get the opportunity to make movies and have the movies be um be seen um but that's just my big thing it's just originality um inclusion i i want to see more of that especially like in the community in movies in a convention circuit everything i want to see more of that agreed have you agreed I'm glad she brought up cons. I'm gonna just throw that in there. I'm really glad you brought up cons. Mm-hmm. I, I would love to see more of us in the con space. Be having fun at the cons, but where my people at? Yeah. Yes. There Invite couple, them. There were a couple times last year, I'm like, are we the only two black people in town? We probably were. Oh boy. Um, <laughs> but back to the topic, that's a different rant that you know I will get on again. <laughs> um, to piggyback off what Ash was saying, we we gotta step it up because we are seeing the same tired tropes because the same tired white men working. I for people who did not see this new season of Fargo, I am violently upset with that finale. Um, all the goodwill they tried to earn is wasted. And you look at that, which needs a new infusion of blood. We need new writers, people of color, specifically women of color. Um, you look at that, and then you look at this new true detective. Ethan Lopez has us excited for a cop drama, y'all. Can we talk about that? Because she understands what's missing, what needs to change, why this is always failing, <laughs> and that cops are the problem, even if she can't say that. Um, she understands these things, <laughs> and so she's like, that's what a show could and should look like. And we're fucking excited. Um, we have actors who never get any screen time. And we're always like, where are the Native American actors? Not working because Hollywood has a problem. Um, Isa Lopez does not have a problem. And she's like, hello, let's talk about it. Let's do this story. And it's fucking fun. I, I'm tired of us not being in the casting room. I'm tired of us not being behind the cameras because we keep getting the same issues. Mm-hmm. Um, People who are in charge of understanding intersectionality. So they're like, we're doing a queer theme and it's all white people. And then you have like the black people as the side tropes and the sidekicks. <laughs> and it's like, is this the 1970s again? What if you switch it around and the sidekicks are white? What does that feel like? And they're like, gasp. Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> How will I see myself? <laughs> and it's like, I'm be on my movies, Ken. <laughs> <So>, <laughs> I I just again I we need we need more people t- to get the jobs and I don't know how this gonna happen because Monkey Paws want production company <laughs> right. they can't do it all alone who else has right. the money who has a lottery ticket let's go yes yes authenticity would be something like yes original stories like Ash was talking about but just again they close how I wrote that's why it's five out of five seeing black people and I'm tired because you know I love the hood black movies I will watch any of them random Tubi movies I'm not gonna lie to (laughs) y'all I'm gonna press play on a movie called Spaghetti in the next seven business days and I I know it's not good but I'm going to watch it I'm gonna watch it earnestly and when I watched They Clone Tyrone, just seeing Black people and they're authentically, you know, people who would live in that area, but they're not like cartoonish. This is not a caricature. It's not some, It they're not like shucking and jiving. It's not, none of that. And even the things that we would be considered tropes, one, they're played authentically. And two, those things are visited in the movie, you know, with the whole situation that's happening. I'm not going to get into it, but down to the music, the way people move, the way people talk, it's clearly, and the director is a young person, like the writer, I think he was also a writer, but there's other people writing it, but you can tell it's not somebody who's 53 years old trying to write for somebody who's 20. That is wild. Even if you are from there, they don't talk like that no more. That's not how they string the words together. And this one it felt like no that i know somebody who talked like i know somebody who would say that i know somebody who would drive a car like that who would play that kind of music who would dress that way you you know i'm just like i would like to see more of that like 
yes, the urban, you know, horror or the, the Z horror, but not cartoonish, like authentic and let us have it. Because I'm like, that was some sci-fi shit. What if we had some slasher shit on that? I, I want to see that, like put some money behind it. Okay. Mm. Yeah. That's what I want to see. That's facts. I'm going to take both of y'all's answers. Um, first being intersectionality needs to start trickling its way in. It's like way, way too late at this point. But, you know, the studios have figured out the formula. You know, the more brown people that we put on the screen, the more Asian people that we put in there, the more different types of people we put in, you know, the better our chances of getting away before they see what our freaking writer's room looks like. Um, but obviously that's not the case, which is the other answer that I took from Jazz. Um, and we can tell on the screen. And I was definitely pleased last year to see that there were a couple new releases that had Black women as leads um, or like secondary lead supporting characters. Love that. Always love to see that. I will never not be happy to see that. Um, but then, of course, you put them in the trope, takes them down a point. And then they start saying things that don't really sound like anybody that I know. Um, and everybody that I know is definitely a large spectrum of, of those. And none of them really sound like this and starts to kind of be given away. So um, what's definitely missing is more melanin opposite the camera. Um, there were a couple movies last year, not just horror, but just in general, um, that were directed by Black women. And every time it happens, it's like a crazy thing. Mm. And I would like for it not to be a crazy thing um, because maybe then I don't have to cringe so much and I can just watch a movie and be uh, what's the word I'm looking for. I can, I can disappear into the movie without being taken out, taken out. And also that's just what's fair. And I firmly believe that. And, you know, little goes a long way. Little goes a lot. Read the reviews. Little mm -hmm. bit goes a long way. I agree with that. Um, I'm kind of, I'm still like, I mean, y'all all said pretty good, pretty good answers. Um, I also agree about the inclusion. I want to see more Black women doing stuff. Just like, <laughs> that's why I make the work that I make. Because um, I just want to see more Black women doing stuff in horror. Um, I want to see like, more like whodunits with Black families like in the South, I need to see Ooh. something like that, like something like that. Um, I just, a mix of all the answers that were said, more inclusion, more diversity, less tropes, um, more like inclusion within the horror genres, like different types of horror genres. Um, I just, uh, and to be honest, I'm not picky. I'm not picky. I'm very simple. Um, just make it good. <laughs> just make it good. <laughs> Write it properly. Make it good. Throw a black female lead in there. Have some black po folks in front of and behind the camera. I'm not picky, to be honest. I don't think it's asking for too much. Um, I think everybody here had good answers, and I agree with all of them. Okay, well... I know we're almost at that time, but I got one more question for y'all before I roll out, okay? <laughs> um, what are y'all looking forward to, like, in horror in the upcoming year? You know, we've got a lot of new announcements, okay? We've got Jordan Peele. We got Monkey Paw and them. They're doing shorts. I mean, the shorts game now, the realm is getting bigger. Y'all know how I go up for shorts, so I'm very motherfucking excited for that. Um, there's a lot of different, like, artwork collab physical media stuff that's coming out i know like mondo and them just had an update and how that's going and who's putting out like memorabilia we got long legs that was just announced Ooh. like it's a lot of shit dropping so and i know we just got here it's just <laughs> our third day here to be quite honest but what are you what are you looking forward in 2024 and seeing in horror whether it's in your own personal work um or just in the genre in general I, I mean, I'm definitely excited for Jordan Peele's next project. I think he said he's dropping it around Christmas. Yep, on mm -hmm. Christmas. Yeah. It's going to fight Chris Nosferatu. too. Woo! Best belief I'm going to be there. Um, so I'm I'm super super excited about um his next project. Um, 
Monkey Paw, they just released the trailer for um oh my gosh, what's the name of it? Monkey oh, Monkey, Monkey Man. Man. Cuz I and then I just read like Netflix had the rights for it and Jordan Peele was like I'm going to release it like around the, like all over the place like it's going to be in theaters. It deserves to be in theaters. So I was like, I know that's right. Um so I'm super excited about that. If y'all know me, I'm all about Art the Clown. I love me some Terrifier. So I'm there super excited for Terrifier 3. I'm ready to buy my ticket like right now. Um, Long Legs, the all the poster art they've been dropping for that. Gorgeous. Oh my gosh. Like, and they're just so bleak about it. Like, they're not giving away too much. You're just like, oh, it's going to be a mess of film. Oh, Nicolas Cage is in it. So you already know it's going to be off the chain. Mm-hmm. Uh, <laughs> You know he'll do anything for a paycheck, which I'm not mad at him. Um, but when it comes to horror, I'm just excited about everything. Um, just thinking about thinking back, like when you bring up horror to people who are not like crazy fans, they like give us like the the side eye. They're like, oh my gosh, like they think we're crazy. We're not crazy. We're just passionate about our art. Um, Facts. We just we just love it so. I'm just excited about everything that's going to be happening for the community, uh, whether it be movies, books, television, music, my comics. Like I'm just super excited about it. And I'm definitely going to pull up to everything if I can. Cause um, no matter what, I'm just going to, I'm just going to, I'm just going to support it. I, I don't know. Damn it. <laughs> Popcorn. <laughs> <laughs> all right i i think about this like every year like what am i looking forward to what are the things that i need to put on my calendar so i can get a week away and be like oh my gosh it's coming um but then the end of the year happens and i look back at the year that i just passed and i always am the most excited about things that i don't see coming um cuz you know i just i don't really know and i guess if i have time to think about it but, you know, like when Eva Lurks all smacked us in the face, like so, so freaking hard. And I didn't see that coming. You know, I wasn't reading press releases about when Eva Lurks. Um, but I will say I am really, really excited for that new Alien joint. It's going to drop this year. I'm very excited to see uh, Quiet Place because Lupita is there. Yes. Um, yay. And maybe Mr. Krasinski can uh, redeem himself to me personally. Personally. Mm. Um he had to for leave what the room. he did, he had to leave the room. This is a new director writer. I just <laughs> make sure that Sheree the Slayer is not in that room because when he walks, surprise, in there. surprise, she's um, in- yeah. Um, and I'm also excited to like be outside again and go link up with uh horror journalists, friends, and podcasters, and maybe go to some um film festivals and stuff, and you know, like hold hands, do panels. Girl, girl things. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm excited about events. We got a lot of events, a lot of stuff coming up physically. Uh, the releases. I don't keep up with horror news like that because I do not watch trailers. I didn't even know what that long leg thing was. I was like, "What's that? I don't know what that's about. I had never heard of it until I see them posters, and I don't want to know nothing else. I'm gonna go see it. Nicola Cage is in it. That's all I needed to know. Like, girl, I don't care if it's not even a horror movie. I'm coming to see what he about to do. Um. So I'm excited more so about events because the horror movies, I'm going to watch them anyway, whether they're good or bad for the most part. Uh, that that That's happening. But I'm excited to like physically go places and see the, all the other horror people outside and see what they're doing. It's such a good feeling, isn't it? You're like, yes, yeah. I'm here with my people. <laughs> mm-hmm. That'll be me in March. Buying everything at the con. <laughs> Crying when all your money's gone. Me and all five of my doll hairs at BlizzCon. <laughs> <laughs> Fanning myself. Oh, uh, <laughs> I, I'm excited. Um, Melissa Barrera has two horror movies coming out. One mm-hmm. of which is in Radio Silence called Abigail. The marketing gave too much away for me, but I'm still going to see it because it's Radio Silence and it's Melissa Barrera. So ah. um, I just love that like Spyglass played in her face and she's like, I don't need you. You needed me. Mm-hmm. Good night. Game over. Um, I just I live for that. <laughs> it was the game over that just sent me into orbit just now. 
right <laughs> she was she was like this was cute you're gonna wish you're gonna regret it um and i'm sure there's somewhere right now be like remember when we were getting money and we weren't the villains and i'm just like yeah uh i i am also excited for the random movie that's gonna pop out of nowhere like last year i did not expect saltburn to be the moment i would then be like oh emerald film does stuff it's cool and i was like I have a new personality. Um, <laughs> Run the dance floor, repeat forever. I'm gonna learn the dance moves, and I'm just looking forward to something surprising me like that because, like, you never see those coming. Yeah, I agree with that. The surprise movies are always really fun. Um, I forgot about Terrifier three. Now I'm like, ooh, <laughs> <laughs> can't wait to go see that. Um, that's really exciting. I saw the promotional stuff for Long Legs. I want to check that out and see what that's about. The um, the promotional photos for that looked really, really good. Looked really clean. Um, I got to say, since we were talking about um, conventions a little earlier, I did bend at a convention or two. I don't know about this year, y'all. I don't know. Mm. It's, it's not a... Uh, it's not fun. It's not fun. Everybody's looking for fan art and I don't, nobody's looking for original stuff. So they missing out then. They, they missing out. That's I would like crazy. to just go though. I literally yeah, I cannot walk past your table without buying something. That is true. Time. I have walked. That is I mean, true. See, my keys, exactly. my everything, but Hey, just like hop on the other side and then we'll run around. <laughs> I might have to. I might have to. I might have more fun that way. Um, and probably spend less money. But um, that aside, though, I would be looking forward to go to see some horror conventions because I've never attended actually. So this would be a good time. Um, I'm I'm still kind of like moving out of like just the fan space to like, oh yeah, let me like move over in a more professional. Uh, settings so everybody here is like my senpai but <laughs> um on top of that for the upcoming year I'm excited about my stuff I'm not even gonna hold you I'm excited to work on my own things um try to produce some new black horror stories um with female leads because lord knows we need more of that um and that's really it so that's where I'm at this year it's so cool y'all I'm like, listen, I don't know if you've done Blurcon yet, but I feel like Blurcon might be your girl. Ooh, I did we Blurcon. were there together at the same Blurcon. time. Where was I? It's okay. <laughs> she was stuck behind the table. You know what? Where was I? <laughs> no, but Blurcon, Blurcon has two floors of vendors and I was booked for both floors. I didn't know they had two floors. So they had me on one floor. I was fully set up. And then on the other floor, it was like, my name is there, but the table was empty because I didn't know it existed. So, you know, a few like internal issues. I mean, you know, but it's a, all right. It was hot. For another time. It was hot. It's it, was hot. Good. <laughs> it was a great time. We was outside. That's all we're going to say. Because I was like, where That's, was it was fantastic. I got to see Breezy Supreme uh, perform on the way out. I can't complain. Can't complain. Uh, I need to try to go this year. Oh. Please. Yes. It was amazing. I applied. We'll see if I can get in. It was amazing getting like actual good food in the parking lot. I listened to the Thought Squad, <laughs> which I didn't know was a real group until there. I'm obsessed. I'm on the TikTok. I'm uh, I'm at a grandma's house. Like, yeah, go ahead and like get your melons together. I got time. What? <laughs> I... <laughs> you said Thought Squad? Thought they Squad were was, the, was the moment. They were bumping. We were, were out there they? like moments. Sweating. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Some of the Thought girls were a little sick and I was like, smooth to the left. <laughs> <laughs> Do one of those? Okay. Absolutely. It was just like, ooh, ah, keep going, girl. You're doing great, sweetie. <laughs> I'm gonna have to look into that. <laughs> They're the moment. They're definitely the moment. Um, but we could chit chat after this. Everybody that's tuned in, Thank y'all so much for listening to us to getting into what we got going on. Hopefully you picked up some gems. Hopefully you even got some things. And if you have any comments or anything, leave it down in the bottom below. Send us emails. 
you know where to find us. But if you don't know where to find us, I'm going to work my way backwards so you can hear about the people, what all they're doing, and how you can get into what they're doing. And maybe y'all can chit-chat and be friends like Cheetah Divas. I'm still stuck on Cheetah Girls because, <laughs> yes, I didn't read all the books, but I was here for the movies and I got that soundtrack. I own the soundtrack. Thank you yes. very much. Physical. From Target. That was a Target purchase. Same year. Thank you. Oh, yes. But <clears throat> it's not about me. Okay. Um, Zero. Tell the people about what's good with you. Tell them about where to find you if you want them to. Um, Tell them things. Um, uh, I've been Zero Gravity and you can find me on socials. I'm on most things. Instagram, Twitter, Twitch, Letterboxd, even Facebook. Um, at IDK Gravity. And you can also listen to my podcast of those really cool podcasts with Sheree the Slayer. It's awesome. We're going to have guests this season. It's going to be a hoot. Um, at Blurdy Massacre. Mm. Second Thanks. that. That podcast. <laughs> I'm a fan of the podcast. Um, <laughs> I'm not being biased. We also got merch. Um, I I have been Sheree. That is an ongoing problem. You can find me at Miss Sheree on Instagram and Twitter, and I'm sure some other places I've forgotten. Um, you can also like read some of my articles at Dread Central because like when people read things, those numbers add up, and then people are like, oh, we see the value in keeping all of these writers. And all of these not... black female writers. Mm -hmm. Listen, listen. I've got some articles coming out this month. I'm really proud of. So open them, y'all. If y'all gonna open them, make your mama open them. I don't care who reads it. Like <laughs> y'all can share. <laughs> exactly. Um, girl, it's... that's scary. Oh, oh wait. Oh, go ahead, go, 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 no, no. I thought we were going backwards alphabetical. Oh, no. It don't even okay. matter at this point. Go ahead, Jazz. We outside. I mean, it's just real quick. Girl, that's scary. That's all I got. Okay, next person. <laughs> it's your girl, Ash. To... Well. I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, you're fine. No, it's your girl, Ash to Ashes. That's Ash with the X in the middle, Ashes. You can catch me on Rise from the Dead podcast where uh, Jerm and I uh, review lesser known horror gems and we're just trying to figure out if they should rise from the dead or stay buried. Um, then I'm also a co-host on Kill the Dead podcast with my Devin and Gray himself. Very nice, very nice. I'm sorry, Jazz took me out with that reverse <laughs> alphabetical. <laughs> reverse, um, reverse. <laughs> um, uh, I've been DJ Murakami. I forgot to say what I do. I'm actually a, a horror manga artist and illustrator. You can catch me on my website, gigimurakami.art, not .com, .art. Um, and I also have an online store at gigimurakami.store. I am on all the socials. On Instagram is gigi underscore murakami and just at gigimurakami everywhere else. Um, and yeah, look at uh, Zero's Wall. All my posters are on there. Pick up some stuff for yourself. And be fly like her. So open your wallet. Mm -hmm. Open I the wallet. Fly. Take I will my be money. Fly. Let me decorate your your office, cat. Oh, oh, oh! I'm already here. I because you y'all y'all saw what. The... If not the office, the plexiglass. Like, let me put one of those. <laughs> we were doing all the things. It's gonna be right in front of me. It's gonna be the background, so it could be in my partner's uh Zoom calls or whatever Teams mess. I don't know what they heard they'd be talking on, but they'd be at work. And I feel that. I the people like need to get into it. They do. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Um, And I am Cat Daddy, one half a girl that's scary. Um, Find us on all the things, girl that's scary. Pull up on all these lovely people. Thank y'all so much for sharing space. Thank you so much for sharing your time because earth is crunk. And, you know, I really appreciate y'all doing all the things. Um, Thank you for tuning in to the Black Girls, Black Folks Guide to Horror. Hopefully, like I said, you learned some things. If you didn't, you can know where to find these folks and other people they are connected to in their work so you can educate thyself because it's a lot of folks outside that look like you and I and all over. Uh, until next time, y'all. Bye! Get some crunk in your system. <laughs>